Hey everybody, Christopher at My Physical World. Welcome back. We're going to be doing part two of uh, creating or getting our scenery in the Microsoft Flight Simulator. We have a couple setup things that we're going to do and that's what I'm going to show you today. Um, so everybody has Microsoft Flight Simulator installed and last time I showed you how to get into dev mode. All right, so I need you to get into dev mode because we need to download the software development kit or as we call it the SDK all right so you can only get it when you're in dev mode so um, one I'll show you how to how to download it and then I'm going to show you how you keep it current to the current level all right so you have the help menu you know you're in dev mode when you have this menu across the top because it says dev mode, duh. All right, so if you go to the help menu and you simply, um, now I'm not gonna download it because I already have it downloaded, but just um, go down to where it says SDK installer core, click it and it will download it to your, to your downloads directory. After that's downloaded, go ahead and click the SDK installer documentation and get that downloaded to your download directory all right so let's pretend I just did that it downloaded uh, about 107 megs or so is how big that file is all right now once you have it installed we'll get to that here in a second then every time you go into development mode if you want to check for updates you will see in the upper right hand corner where it says SDK updates, okay? Now, mine's a blue flag, just simply says SDK updates. Pretty much that means there's nothing to update. It's already updated. However, if it was yellow and says updates available, then you click that and it takes you to a screen where you can click on the update and download it and then reinstall it or, or install the update, okay? So, that's all we're going to be doing in Microsoft Flight Simulator at the moment. So, we downloaded our SDK. So, I'm going to get out of Microsoft Flight Simulator and I'll see you in a second. Okay, we're out of Microsoft Flight Simulator and I basically just have uh, Windows Explorer up and it's pointing at my downloads directory. And inside of there, I have an, M an MSI file. It's an executable and that's the installer for the SDK. The current version is uh, 0.16.0.0, all right? And then if I had the documentation downloaded, it'd be right, right next to this, all right? So to install the SDK, you just double click that file and then run through the prompts, just like you're stall installing any other software that you have ever done on Windows, all right? Follow the prompts, uh, pick your directory where you want it installed, uh, me personally, if you look at my directory tree, um, I have just at my root C drive, I just have a directory called MSFS SDK, and then that's where the SDK is installed. If I click on that, you're going to see a series of, of folders. Uh, you have a documentation folder if you install the documentation. I have a samples uh, folder which we'll get to we'll get to in a second and I also have a tools uh, folder now all these other folders we're not going to talk about right now but the two folders that you need to starting out you need to be aware of is the samples and the tools the tools directory has a folder called bin and these are the programs that that uh, run the SDK, all right? Whether uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator is either reading that folder to get resources, or if you go into that bin, you're gonna see an FS package tool EXE, all right? This one is a good idea to know where this particular executable is because you can use it um, efficiently outside of the sim and I'll show you that uh, later on 
uh, on how I use this tool without being in the simulator. Okay, so that's in the tools bin of the SDK. If we go back and go into the samples directory, you're going to see a whole bunch of folders that have exactly what they are. They're samples. All right. Uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator scenery and add-ons, modifications, whatever, are driven by XML and directory structures. Okay. And these particular directories or folders are samples of projects. And it's a good idea to use these as a boilerplate when you're building your own. So that's what we're going to do next is I'm going to show you how to take a sample and modify it and get ready to use it uh, in your, your project. Okay, so what you're looking at right now is the is we are in the SDK samples folder and I am going to grab a sample and I'm going to put it in my tutorials folder down here. If you notice I have a folder called MSFS projects and that's where I keep all my Microsoft Flight Simulator projects okay that I'm working on. Alright so what we're going to do is we're going to do a simple scenery folder. Uh, so basically what I want to do is go into the samples and I want to select the folder for simple scenery and I'm going to right click and drag and drop that into my project folder in this case it's tutorials okay so I'm going to say copy here and then I'm going to do some ask <coughs> sorry I'm going to do some housekeeping I'm going to close all these here and then I'm going to go in my tutorials directory and now you see I have a copy of the simple scenery in my tutorials directory okay okay now we're inside the tutorials uh, folder and you see the simple scenery now you want to give this folder a brand new name you don't want to keep it simple scenery you want to call it what it is all right so I'm going to call this particular scenery package whoops I'm sorry didn't mean to do that slow click there we go I'm going to call this simple scenery folder I'm going to call this project let's say tut1 all right so I name it tut1 now you need to go into the the tut1 directory and this XML here, this is the main XML for the project, and it has to be the same name as your project of what you're really going to call your project. So slow click twice on that and call this TUT1 as well. All right. Then we are going to open, and this is something I should have put in the first video. We're going to open an editor so we can edit this XML. All right. I'm not going to go into detail of what an XML is, um, but uh, you can kind of get familiar with it with many resources that are on the on the web. Okay. But I'm going to show you how to do some simple editing to make it able to talk to your project. Okay. I just want to know I just want you to know that I don't do a lot of fancy editing with my video I just sit at the computer and and talk so sometimes I'm going to be pausing to set up for something else okay so I'm not a professional by the way <laughs> all right so there is one tool that you can download that's free uh, we love free stuff Everybody's familiar with Notepad that comes with Windows. Well, there's a better one out there called Notepad++. So uh, go out, do a search on Notepad++ and download it and use that as your text editor. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going, so I'm going to assume that you have Notepad++ installed on your computer. Um, go to the XML for TUT1 and right click and open with Notepad++. So you see this XML. 
there are some things inside this XML that we need to uh, change. So first you can change the name and I'm gonna call this TUP1, all right? And then you're gonna see a line for package definitions that says my company dash scenery dash simple dot XML. You wanna change this name to the same, the name of your project, which is gonna be TUP1, okay? And then do a save, all right? And then you can get out of this by just, I, I have a habit to make sure that I have the actual tab closed itself. All right, so we have the main XML in the name of the project. Now, you're going to see a package sources and package definitions folder. Don't worry about the uh, sources yet. We'll come back to that. But go into the package definitions, double click there, and you're going to see a My Company Scenery dash simple XML. Rename that. Whoops, I did that wrong. Hold on. Yeah, slow click twice, rename that to TUT1 or whatever your project is. Okay, and hit enter. And then the folder above it that had the same name, name that TUT1 as well. Double click slowly, TUT1. Okay, so in the package definitions, both of these say TUT1. Now, Go into TUT1 and you're going to see a business JSON file. Don't worry about that. And you're going to see a com content info uh, folder as well. This is just a, a thumbnail that has like a picture of your airport or whatever you're working on. But I'm just using the default placeholder. I'm not going to put an image in there. All right. So that's all we need to do in package definitions. Now let's go into the XML that's in pa pa uh, package definitions. Right click and open that with Note plus, Notepad++. Plus plus. And this XML is a little bit longer. So there's a few things in here we need to change. So change the My Company scenery. Change that to Tut1. Okay. And then come down to anywhere you find my company scenery and change that to tut one. There. And whoops. Here. That was brilliant. How about one? There we go. All right. And you're going to see package sources. Um, it says model lib. Now, very important. If you leave this model, if you leave this saying model lib, other developers are going to develop their scenery and they might leave theirs as model lib as well. Okay. Not a good idea. All right. It is not a good idea at all. You want your model lib to be unique to your project, all right? So I'm going to rename package sources this model lib, and I'm going to put a tut1 dash in front of it, okay? So it's unique. So if another developer has a project, they have to call theirs tut1 for it to interfere with your project, all right? Now, the rest of them, you can leave the same. So hit save. Now, if you change package sources to a unique name, you're gonna need to change something in your file directories as well. So save and then get out of Notepad++. And then go back into your project and you're gonna see package sources. All right, so double click package sources and you're going to see there's that model lib directory. All right, so we want to rename that to what we did in the XML. So slowly click twice on that and rename that to tut1-modellib. Okay, and then hit enter. 
All right, then go into that folder and see the light, light sample and, and sample my box. You don't need those. So select both of those and delete them. In the texture, you want to double click, go into the textures folder and remove these images that are in there. These are PNGs that they're using for textures, but these are only for samples. You don't need those when you're creating a new one. So go ahead and go into the textures directory, select those PNGs and delete them. So it's empty, but leave the directory. Don't, don't, don't remove the directory itself. All right, so package sources now looks like this. Okay, so our project is basically set up. I'll show you some other edits that we're, you can do to the XML a little later. But for getting your project up and going, this is the directory. This is how you uh, rename or work, change that simple directory into something that's workable for your particular projects. Now my, my, direct, my folder, uh, MS FS projects tutorial is unique for this for this film but yours might be uh, you might have a different directory name leading up to your tut one so to speak all right does that make sense I hope all right so that's really all you need to do to get your first simple scenery folder directories set up for your project all right in the next video I'm going to show you the next steps after you create that folder all right so come back for part three I know this might be a little boring for most of you but after that we're going to do some uh, some more initial setup all right so we'll see you on part three see you later